You crown the year with all your goodness. What new intention have you decided to bring into the new year? What's on your mind? When we look at Psalm 96, we find that we are encouraged in that endeavor. In fact, it encourages us to sing a new song, a new song. And I would add, well, if you're going to sing a new song, make sure you can sing. Here's what, you know, when I think of that, I remember graduated from college, Mercedes and I were married, I uh, joined the staff of, of a very large church uh, before entering seminary, and I was to start a youth ministry. And the first Sunday that I preached there, the ch church was live on radio, and I thought, because there was no on-off switch to the mic, I thought the sound technician would turn it on and off. And after the sermon, my wife was downstairs with some others. They were getting ready for their fellowship hour afterwards, and the sound was piped downstairs. and and. All these workers downstairs were saying, who is that singing? That's terrible. <laughs> you know who it was? Mercedes says, I think that's my husband. I learned something then. But when you think of this new song, it's not really about singing ability that the psalmist is after, but it is about what drives the singing. Where is that passion in the song? And this song of worship from Psalms is actually based on another passage in the Bible known as David's Anthem of Adoration, which is found in 1 Chronicles 16. So you can take 1 Chronicles 16, and you can look at Psalm 96, and you will realize there's a lot of parallels there, almost identical. And the 1 Chronicles 16 was a song of celebration and a new song because it was celebrating the time when the Ark of the Covenant was brought to its resting place. In fact, if you compare those two songs, it's, it's amazing how so many of the phrases are repeated. That word, new, like new year, can mean something that's brand new, but it can also mean something that is fresh, relevant, and timely. When I think of fresh and relevant and timely, I think those are aspirations for the ministry of a local church and for a people of that community. A new song to sing that is about freshness and relevancy and timely. And just that simple expression, new song. It occurs several times in the book of Psalms, indicating fresh outbursts, rejoicing and reverence, and how they are important to God, but they're also helpful to us. We are blessed to experience it in so many ways. Every week in the original arrangements from our resident composer, Kostya, He's spectacular, isn't he? I mean, oh, really, as the video goes on for the meditation video, it's a new song. It's a new original song that we are able to experience in this place every Sunday. A new, new song. It's in the offertory video. It's in the accompanying music. It's in the special music from Carmen and the band, they do a wonderful job. It blesses us all. It's also a new song, even in the inspirational reading from Eddie and Kelly. 
ways of expressing a newness of the love and dynamic relationship we have with the holy, loving God. Now, while we experience that here in, in worship and, and also online, get this. When we sing a new song, we're not just singing to God. We are also singing to others. Others who need a new song. They need to hear a different tone. And actually, if you think of it, our primary outreach tool as a local church in the corporate life of the believing community is that new song. It is our evangelism. That is our new song, what we do and experience in worship on a Sunday morning. Our neighbors need to hear that. They need to see that. To see the Christian way of life that inspires faith and inspires and encourages belief to come to terms with that reality and make a commitment to it. And the strength and conviction of our singing vertically to God, they're going to reverberate horizontally into the world. A new song, a song we sing, and the newness is before us in 2023. Will Williman who was a colleague of mine in years gone past, who, who later became a bishop. I like the story that, that he shared that is so to the point about singing a new song and the significance of that in a hurting world. He shares a story how at the end of one day, he was a pastor, he decided to, to visit a member of, of his congregation who was a lawyer. He dropped by the lawyer's office at the end of the day, and it was just the two of them. And Willimon started the conversation by asking, what sort of day did you have? Well, the lawyer replied, a typical day full of misery. Okay. In the morning, I assisted a couple in evicting their aging father from his house so they could take everything while he was in a nursing home. All legal, but not particularly moral. By lunchtime, I was helping a client evade his worker's compensation insurance payment. It's legal. And then in the afternoon, I was enabling a woman to ruin her husband's life forever with the sweetest divorce you ever saw. That was my day. Willowen thought to himself as he heard his parishioner lawyer unload, thinking to himself, what could I say? So then Willowen said this, he said, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, thinking what on earth I have to say in a sermon that might be helpful to you. And then the lawyer said this, I love it. It's not the sermon I come for, preacher, it's the music. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, don't get a big hand. It's the music. It is. He went on to say, I go a whole week with nothing beautiful, little good until Sunday. Sunday. 
And sometimes the music I hear and sing is for me the difference between life and death. A new song. That dynamic power of the gospel and what Jesus does in the life of the church is amazing. So, <laughs> sing a new song, okay? What a go. What a thing to bring into the new year, something to accomplish. And when we do that, that is the kind of singing, that kind of singing takes our faith in every direction imaginable. Our praises go up to God. They go out to our neighbors. They run wild in the world, even online, and they spring into eternity as we sing with the faithful, both past and present. So let's sing a new song in 2023. But a song with particular notes, a note of, part of my song, a new building a new building to help us better do the mission of bringing persons to Christ and to nurture their faith and fellowship. That's a new song. And what a note. A new song of deepening our covenant relationships. What binds us together it's not a common creed. Of course, we, we believe in Christ, but what binds us together is that promise that we make to be the body of Christ together, to share the gospel, to care as Jesus would have cared. A note to sing a new song that strengthens inward devotion and outward service and intellectual integrity, that we have those three working harmoniously together and that we're not lopsided but that there there is order and balance in what we learn how we act and how we think essentially a new song where Jesus is Lord so look around you let the trees of the forest Sing for joy and let our praises resound as an announcement of the risky work, it's risky, of those who have built up the kingdom of God and the faithful workers who are still to come. We need a new song. Our country needs new song. So, as we say around here, don't sing onward Christian cowards. Go, um, don't sing onward Christian soldiers and go out like cowards. Don't sing a mighty fortress is our God and put our trust in our bank account. Don't sing when we all get to heaven and live as though life is endless. Don't sing my faith looks up to thee and then trust your own abilities. Don't sing I love to tell the story and never tell it. Okay. Before we receive communion on this great, wonderful first day of the year, we're going to sing a beautiful little hymn. Take my life and let it be. What a great thing to bring into the new year and bring before God as we, we dedicate ourselves to his purposes this year. Take my life and let it be. 
consecrated Lord to thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my voice and let me sing or try to sing. Always only for my king. You see, there's a special choir in heaven for people who can't cut it on earth. But we can sing joyously and it is in harmony. Take my silver and my gold. Not a mite would I withhold. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At thy feet its treasure store. Take my will and make it thine. I shall be no longer mine. Please stand and let us sing that hymn as we prepare our hearts to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. 